The Mr. Beacon podcast is sponsored by Williot, scaling IoT with battery-free Bluetooth. Welcome to the Mr. Beacon podcast. We're here at Bluetooth World, and we've just stepped out of the main keynote uh, auditorium where we've been listening to Jeanette, who's an IT director uh, at Mall of America, talk about uh, their deployment of Bluetooth beacons. She got more questions than anyone's ever got at the Bluetooth uh, Special Interest Group conference. So, Jeanette, thanks for spending a few minutes with us to talk about what you've been doing. Absolutely. So, um, tell us uh, what you're using Bluetooth beacons for at the mall. So primarily right now, we're using beacons as a way to provide guest wayfinding. So back in 2015, um, we went about uh, trying to figure out how we could help guests navigate the space. We have 40 million visitors to the property each year. The facility is 5.6 million square feet, 4.3 miles of storefront. Um, a lot of uh, interesting things to see, but you have to know where you're going. And so uh, we put this system in place, um, and uh, it, it took a while to get right, um, but we think now we've got uh, an experience that's very similar to what guests experience on their mobile devices when they're doing other mapping platforms today. Very good. And just in case there's any doubt, where is Mall of America in the ranking of largest shopping malls? We are the largest uh, shopping and entertainment complex in North America. Fantastic. So oh, I should say United States. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, West Edmonton Mall. <laughs> Finding your way around is potentially a bit of a challenge. Yes. Um, and so, um, can you tell us a little bit about the technology that's behind this service? So it's live now, people can use it? Correct, right. absolutely. Um, all you need to do is download the Mall of America app. Um, and obviously, uh, we encourage you to join our Wi-Fi. You certainly need to have Bluetooth turned on. Um, and then it's able to pinpoint your location. And then you can select any destination. Um, so we have got 520 tenants to choose from. Um, and then it will provide you with step-by-step -step directions to get from where you are to that tenant location. Um, and so you've basically got a, a dot. What color dot Correct. is it? It's a blue dot. It's a, it's a, it's a blue, blue dot experience, <laughs> and you're getting people from where they are to where they want to, and it's kind of the mapping metaphor that people are very Correct. used to. Um, so what, uh, what beacons did you go with? What, uh, what product? Absolutely. We're using uh, the Cisco Halo beacons, and that's been really good for us for a couple reasons. Um, one is we're able to centrally configure those. So we actually tested a couple of blue dot providers um, in the early stages to find who could provide that true blue dot experience. Um, and we ended up uh, going with Senyan for the, the blue dot provider. Um, and the additional benefit of these Halo beacons, they plug into our, our wireless access points, and so we don't need to worry about power. Um, we've got a lot of friends in the stadium industry who deployed battery beacons, which worked great for the first season, and then not. Um, and so the cost of replacing those beacons is not in the actual beacons themselves, but it's the labor with the scale of facilities like ours. And it's even more complex for a property like Mall of America. We don't have an off season, um, so everything has to be done after hours. So um, the Halo product, that supports Wi-Fi location as well as Bluetooth, is that correct? That is correct, yes. And you went for Bluetooth, why was that? We initially tried to do it with Wi-Fi alone, um, but we found that uh, phones make bad choices at times, and so the... Uh, like teenagers. Yes, <laughs> yes, especially, uh, especially like teenagers, yes. Um, we, uh, we found that um, the, the Wi-Fi can really detect where you are if you're not moving, but as you walk through the property, um, Wi-Fi has a difficult time, particularly with the phones, in um, you know, keeping track of which access point you should be connected to. Um, sometimes the, the phones can be a little sticky, and they'll hold on to a poor signal too long. Mm -hmm. um, so obviously the, the signal degrades, but then it also skews the triangulation. That totally makes sense, because really Wi-Fi's primary role is connectivity, uh, and beacons were built for for location and precision. Right. Um, you mentioned that you need to have Wi-Fi turned on and Bluetooth turned on, which I think uh, a lot of the viewers of this podcast would, <laughs> would know, but maybe the users of the app wouldn't know. Um, what, uh, do you have a sense for how much of an issue that is? What percentage of people have got those radios turned on versus not? You know, we, we don't really know for sure how many have them turned off. Um, the app uh, obviously tells them if they would like to leverage the location services that they need to turn on their Bluetooth. Um, but uh, they can certainly also just use the, the app as a, a map. 
um, and that can provide them with some contextual information. You can select a starting location and an end location, but obviously the more enhanced experience is with uh, the beacon enabled. I think um, there's less of a challenge with um, getting people to turn on their Bluetooth than there is getting people to download one more mobile app. Yes. yes. How do you get them to do that? Um, you know, right now the primarily benefit is is wayfinding, um, yeah. but we are looking at really tying this to a new loyalty program that we hope to launch early next year. And uh, you know, similar to other venues, right? You have to find a good hook. What's going to provide enough benefit to the guests that it's worth it for them to have one more app on their phone? And it, it might be different for different guests. So right now, I think you know, if you're an, a traveler, uh, perhaps that's incentive enough that wayfinding will provide you enough benefit to download the app. That's great. You use it like would at a conference and then you then you take it off. Uh, but for the guests that we have that, that are in the area or come to the mall regularly, we need to provide something more beneficial for them than wayfinding alone. And what was the business driver to this? I can see from a guest point of view, totally makes sense. I want to find one of the 500 plus stores, but was it difficult to get support for the investment you had to put into this? And how did you how did you justify putting the time and effort into creating this app? I think that everyone understood um, what was needed and why it was needed. Um, we are extremely focused on the guest experience at Mall of America. Everything that we do is curated and intended to provide benefit for the guest. And we know that wayfinding is a pain point. Um, in addition to being a large facility, it's also a very dynamic facility. We have a lot of new uh, stores that are opening all the time, and there's just no way to keep track of it. Um, perhaps they're remodeling. They might be moving from one side of the property to the other. They might need to expand. We need to move them to a different spot. Um, and so just to be able to provide all of that information to our guests um, and be able to, to do it efficiently, it made sense. Fantastic. And so you've got the, the base service there, very useful. What do you see in the future? Where do you want to take this? I think that there's a lot of opportunities for um, enhanced experiences for the mall um, to be able to take advantage of this infrastructure. So it might be something as simple as tracking the, uh, the wheelchairs and strollers that we have on the property. And you know we have multiple guest service desks where guests can rent those. Um, and again, the, the facility is very large, right? So perhaps we're out of strollers on one side, but they've got them on the other side. We'd be able to know that right away, and we wouldn't have to call over to the other desk and say, hey, do you have a double stroller left? So we would know that and you know, certainly um, make the call and, hey, can you reserve that? Or can we bring that over here for this guest to be able to use? Um, I think that there's a lot of other uh, potential applications with IoT, um, as well as just um, providing more context for employees. So perhaps they're recording um, maintenance issues and to be able to just snap with the app and let it record where you are and you don't need to describe that information, um, to be able to have um, systematic documentation about that would certainly expedite um, our documentation process and obviously then resolution of any issues. Sounds very worthwhile. These are wonderful insights. Uh, congratulations on a great presentation and congratulations on delivering this uh, value add to your, your guests at the Mall of America. Thank you very much to you and to everyone watching the blog. <laughs> All right. <laughs>